So today we're going to be discussing some of the most difficult Scrum Master interview questions. We're also going to be talking about the reasons why these questions tend to be so difficult to give a convincing answer. We will also be discussing why interviewers love to ask these questions. Last but not the least, which is the most interesting part, I'm going to be giving specific real life sample answers to these questions that will ease your interview for you. So for you to be able to get the full value of this video, make sure you watch to the very end step by step. If you don't know me, I am Karen Formafong, your Agile Evangelist. If you're not a member of this channel yet, make sure that you subscribe to this channel Turn on the notification bell so that you will never miss on any of the beautiful content that we share here, solving specific problems on a weekly basis, sometimes three times a week. Share with your friends, you know, and if you have questions, this is a perfect forum where you can ask your questions and no one is judging you because we are all here to learn. Take advantage of that comment section and drop your questions and we will do our best to address them as we go. Now, let's go straight into the topic. There are some questions among others, which we'll be discussing today, four of them, and we will be assessing this question and giving real sample answers. The first question that 90% of the time you will get in your interviews is that interviewers will ask you if you had the power or the opportunity to change anything in the scrum guide, what would that be? That is the question that is becoming a thing in this um, agile space these days. And to come up with a convincing answer tends to be not too easy. Especially sometimes going to your interview, that is if you already understand what interviewers are looking for, you tend to ignore the Scrum Guide. And sometimes you'll be reading the Scrum Guide to only understand the contents that has been created by the author of this guide. Now, the challenge is that hardly ever will people sit and critically think to see if, oh, is there any opportunity to improve in this Chrome guide? Um, what is missing? What is lacking from this Chrome guide? You know, so hardly ever will people be thinking like that, which is why interviewers love to ask these questions. Most of the time, people see the Scrum guide as a gospel truth because that's a standard. I am only learning. It's not, I am not the one who created this guide. So whatever has been put in this guide should be the, the truth or should be perfect, you know. So now, interviewers ask, this is the reason why interviewers love this question. They ask this question to be able to assess your critical thinking skills. The role of a scrum master is not just a cut and paste role. That is why they love to ask this question to see if you are that kind of person that can critically think and get out of the box. That is the reason why they ask this question. So if you are not a getting out of the, of the box kind of person, you will find this question very challenging to answer. Now, let me give you a specific answer to this question. If I'm being asked this question, if I have the power to change anything in the Scrum Guide, what would that be? For me, if I have the power to change anything in the Scrum Guide, the thing that I will be changing is I will make the a backlog refinement sessions an official event. Just like all the other five Scrum events in the Scrum Guide, the backlog refinement session will become the sixth um, Scrum event. And the reason why I, I would do this is because throughout my working experience, I have realized that the backlog refinement session is absolutely necessary for teams to be able to... Um, confidently plan their work smoothly, flawlessly, and carry and commit to our sprints and be able to deliver value. I, I have clearly seen the difference between teams that do not practice backlog refinement sessions that just go straight into sprint planning sessions and team that does backlog refinement sessions. And the difference is that with teams that, that do not practice backlog refinement sessions, they usually take so many hours during sprint planning meetings. For example, they will take approximately four hours for a two week sprint to, for, to plan a two week sprint. And in the course of um, um, doing the sprint planning, team members will tend to be disengaged because the meeting tends to be too long. You know, attention span these days, <laughs> it's not easy <laughs> to stay put like that for four hours. They tend to be disengaged at the end of the, the sprint or at the end of that planning, 
the many open questions that may come up as they are discussing these user stories. The, the planning is already there. A new sprint has already started. When will they have the time to go resolve those open-ended questions, those, those open questions before starting that sprint? So there will be no more time to be able to do that. However, teams that do practice backlog refinement sessions, it's an opportunity for them to proactively start, um, you know, discussing and fleshing out user stories, uncovering the known about the user stories, uncovering the unknown, draw the line between their comfort level, the, 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 the complexity of the work, the, the, the effort that is required, and all these open questions that are pending. The PO or whoever has to go get the answers to these questions will have enough time to go get the answers to these questions and bring it to the team before the actual planning meeting. That way, as team members are planning to start a new sprint, they are confident. They are committing to items confidently, and then as they start running that sprint, they will it will it will really reduce the possibility for team members to keep running back and forth with open questions to the PO in the course of an ongoing sprint. You know, that distraction will really be eliminated. And as a result of that, they will be able to deliver high quality value to their customers. So that is the reason why I think the backlog refinement sessions should be an official event. As a matter of fact, let me tell you this true story. In 2020, when the new Scrum Guide was released in November 2020, right? I think it was November 20th, 2020. I was so fortunate enough to be part of the launching event the conference that was going on hosted by by the, the founders of scrum so when it was time to ask for audience to ask questions or participants to ask questions that was the question i asked that was the question i asked and what i heard from them is they said that yeah that's something that they, that they can take into consideration because based on what i've explained it makes sense and i am not the only one who have said this so many other people have said this same thing so you see so yes that is the answer to that question. Question number two, what will you do if a team member consistently don't attend the daily scrum? What will you do if a team member is not attending the daily scrum? Okay, the reason why this question tends to be difficult is that sometimes, especially if you don't have the experience, how would you know what to do if a team member is not attending the daily scrum? Because this is not in the scrum guide. If, you're only a, if you've only ended at the Scrum Guide level, if you've not been able to have that opportunity to have a real life experience, it will be difficult for you to answer this question. So you see, so if I'm being asked this question, this is how I would address this question. If a team member is not attending the daily Scrum, what I would do is I would connect with this team member one-on-one, -on -one, seeking to understand first why they are not attending this meeting, seeking to understand their level of understanding of the purpose of this event. And based on my experience, I have done this and I realized that a team member had no clue on the purpose of the daily scrum because this team member wasn't very familiar with scrum. The team member thought that it was just one of the many other meetings. And again, the team member wasn't also really familiar with the scrum values of commitment accountable to each other as a team. This team member wasn't really familiar with all of that. That team member was new to the team. However, the team member was going ahead to, with doing their work. So when I connected with this team member seeking to understand what was going on, why they were not attending this meeting, that was when I learned that the team member didn't really see the reason why they should attend the meeting if they're actually doing their work. The team member thought it was just another status update meeting. And then what's the point when I could use this time to continuously do my work as long as I'm delivering my own piece at the end of the sprint. So what I did was I seized that opportunity to coach the team member to understand the purpose of this meeting, helping the team member to understand that it's just not about you alone. You know, as a team, it's not just one person. If one person is failing, you all are failing. If one person is succeeding, you all are succeeding. So even if you are doing your own piece of the work, you may not have a question, but other team members may have a question that you may be of great help to them. So you see why it is important that you're part of this daily scrum. And the daily scrum is that opportunity where you all discuss among yourself in terms of your the progress of the work and if you have impediments. You know, even yesterday, someone asked, a question that and they thought that you would have been the right person to answer but unfortunately you were not there which is why i noticed and which is why i'm connecting with you right now so when i said that to that team member it clicked the team member was like oh i'm so sorry this is something that i i wasn't aware and 
I will try it out. I will start attending and see what happens. And the team members started attending this meeting. And at the end of the day, we all were happy and we were able to still deliver value to our customers. So that is how I, I address that question. Third question. Interviewers also love to ask this question. According to you, what is the most important agile principle? Now, the reason why this question is challenging is because I can guarantee you that almost 60 to 70 percent of people that are claiming to be agile has never ever looked at the agile manifesto they've never even the, the people that i coach the people that i train on daily basis the agile coaches that i work with the scrum masters that i work with you know helping them to achieve their goal most of the time even when they go for their interviews they come back and they're telling me that i was so shocked when they asked this question i'm like no 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 you don't have to be that's the foundation of what you should be built on even before wanting to becoming an agile practitioner so interviewers know that people hardly ever know what the, the principles are in the first place so if you don't know what the principles are how would you even know which one to you is the most important so that's why this question is difficult now if I'm being asked this question, I would say that according to me, the most important agile principle is the first one, the people factor. The people factor, which backs up the first value out of the four values, individual and interactions over processes and tools. Because I'm so people centric, I am you know, so passionate about making sure that people are okay. And it's just not about customers. To me, Customers, yes, we want to satisfy customers, but at the same time, we want to make sure that the people that are doing the work are actually being taken care of. They are happy doing what they are doing so that their happiness will translate to the result they are delivering to the customers. You see, and the very first principle um, backs up the very first value, which is why to me, I think is the most important. However, all of the 12 principles are very important, but the people factor of these principles to me is the most important. So that is how I would respond to that question. Fourth question, who facilitates the daily scrum? I am sure that most people will be thinking, but oh, this is a very simple question. Everyone should know who facilitates the daily scrum. And if I ask you all who facilitates the daily scrum, and which is why interviewers love to ask this question, most people, based on my experience interviewing candidates, they usually say, oh, this is a scrum master. That's the responsibility of the scrum master. <laughs> I'm so sorry to shock you to say that, nope, the daily scrum is not supposed to be facilitated by the scrum master. You can check the scrum guide. It's clearly stated. <laughs> the, the scrum master is not even supposed to be in the daily scrum. The scrum master may be in the daily scrum as optional. The scrum master is not mandated to be in the daily scrum because the purpose of the daily scrum, it is an event for the developers by the developers. You see, so the daily scrum, no one in the team has a specific responsibility to facilitate the daily scrum. However, anybody in the team should be capable to should be capable of facilitating the daily scrum keep in mind the whole essence of agility scrumming is about helping your team become self-managing and self-organizing so as a scrum master if you take up on that responsibility to be the facilitator how are you helping your team becoming self-organizing and self-managing what if you are not there? What's going to happen? So as a Scrum Master, you have only one goal to ensure that Scrum is being implemented and implemented effectively. That is your role. Out of everything you'll be doing, that is the goal you're trying to achieve. And part of this goal, under this, this measure goal, is to ensure that your team is becoming self-managing and self-organizing. So instead of jumping and taking the heart of a facilitator and putting it on your head all the time, you are rather impeding the team from achieving that goal. So wh what do you do? So if I realize that the team, you know, is not there yet, yeah, I may guide them, I may facilitate some few sessions, guide them towards taking over the facilitation, which every, no specific, it shouldn't be on the head of any specific person. Anyone should be comfortable and capable of them having that conversation as a team and just run their thing, you see. So I would guide them, and but making them aware that, okay, I'm only guiding for now until you're good enough. We can even, so usually what I do is we set um, a time limit. We set a time box. 
by the time we are the, the second, third sprint, the team should be comfortable with doing that. And, we, and make sure we discuss it openly and track progress, you see. And once the team is comfortable, I just sit back and let them do their thing. That is how you're helping your team. That is part of how you're helping this team become self-managing and self-organizing. So that's going to be it for today. I hope this video was very helpful. If you have questions, please leave them on the comment section. If you have other questions that you think all may be helpful for our audience to know, please also drop them on the comment section and just let me know what you think. And again, before I wrap up for today, you know that we offer Scrum Master training, coaching programs, mentoring programs. We are currently building a new agile coaching program for those that are looking to become agile coaches. So if you want to learn more about our services, please look right up there. Get our contact information and reach out to us through our website. Learn about our programs. Call us, email us, and we'll be more than happy to help you start your journey as a Scrum Master or help you land that first row as a Scrum Master or second, third, fourth row, whatever you're looking for. If you're looking for a career transition or progression from a Scrum Master to an Agile Coach, reach out to us. I'll be more than happy to help you. Thank you so much and I hope to talk to you another time. <laughs>